Hi everyone, in this tutorial we learn about homogeneous differential equations. And to do that we're going to work through two examples, the first of which is shown right here. But before diving in and working through this example, let me quickly summarize both what is meant by a homogeneous differential equation, as well as the idea behind solving them. Given a differential equation dy dx, which equals to some function of x and y, such that the equation can't be rearranged to separate the variables, then if we can write or at least think of this function of x and y as a function which I'll go ahead and call g of y over x, then we say that this equation is a homogeneous differential equation. And to solve it, we'll define a new variable, which we typically call v, which equals to y over x, so that y will equal to v times x, and the idea will be to rewrite our differential equation in terms of the new variable v and x. Doing so will turn our differential equation into a separable differential equation, which we'll find far easier to solve. And so in essence, that's what homogeneous differential equations are all about. That being said, let's go ahead and work through this first example. The first thing we're asked to do is to find the general solution to dy dx, which equals to 2x plus y over x. So let's go ahead. I'll just write sol as in solution. There we go. And I'll quickly copy that equation. That was dy dx, which equals to 2x plus y over x. Looking at this equation, it quickly becomes clear that we're not going to be able to solve it by separating the variables. And so keeping in mind what we just saw, and looking at the right-hand side of this equation, it looks as though if we split the right-hand side into two distinct fractions, it may well be a homogeneous differential equation. So let's go ahead and try. We can write this as dy dx equals to 2x over x plus y over x. Simplifying that, we have dy dx equals to 2 plus y over x. Now looking at the right hand side, it's quite clear that we can think of this as a function of y over x. Now that we know that, we go ahead and define our new variable v. In other words, we let v equal to y over x which in turn means that y equals to v times x. And to write this equation in terms of v and x, we need to replace this dy dx by the derivative of v times x. And for that, we'll use the product rule. In other words, dy dx becomes dv dx times x plus v times the derivative of x, which is just one, and that's equal to two plus y over x, which is v. So we go ahead and write that, that's v. And we've now rewritten our equation in terms of v and x. And looking at it, we can see that we have a v on each side, so we can cancel those out, there we go. Which leads to dv dx times x equals to 2. Comparing this differential equation to the one we started off with, it's quite clear that this change of variable has drastically simplified the equation. In particular, what simplified things is that we can now solve this by separating the variables. Indeed, we can rearrange this to write all the v's on the left-hand side and all the x's on the right-hand side. In other words, we can go ahead and state that this is dv equals to 2 over x dx. Now that the variables are separated, we can go ahead and integrate. So integrating, the left-hand side becomes the integral of dv, and that's equal to the integral of 2 over x dx. And if you find the left-hand side confusing, just keep in mind that when we write this, we should think of this as the integral of 1. So integrating this with respect to v, that becomes v, and that's equal to the integral of 2 over x, which is 2 times ln of the absolute value of x. And of course, we have a constant of integration, c. Now that we've integrated, we can go back and write this equation in terms of y and x again. And all we have to do is replace v by y over x. So that's y over x equals to 2 times ln of the absolute value of x plus c. We can now write this 2 as an exponent on the x inside the logarithm. 
So that's y over x equals to ln of the absolute value of x squared plus c. But since x squared is always positive, we can get rid of this absolute value. And keeping that in mind and multiplying both sides of this equation by x, we obtain the general solution y equals to x times ln of x squared plus cx. And that's the general solution to this equation. We move on to question B, in which we need to find a particular solution to this equation given y equals to 2 when x equals to 1. Well, to find the particular solution, all we have to do is copy the general solution that we have here, but we'll replace y by 2 and every x that we see by 1. All we'll have to do then is solve for c. So this becomes 2 equals to 1 times ln of 1 squared plus c times 1, which is just c. But ln of 1 squared, well, that's ln of 1, and ln of 1 equals to 0. So we quickly see that 2 equals to c. In other words, c equals to 2. With this result in mind, we write the particular solution by copying the general solution and replacing c by 2. So that's y equals to x times ln of x squared plus 2x. And that's the final answer. Notice that what helped us solve this equation is the change of variable that I'm boxing in yellow right now. Thanks to this, we turned our equation into a separable differential equation, which was then relatively easy to solve. With that in mind, let's look at the second and last example. In this second example, the first thing we have to do is find a general solution to the differential equation we see here. That's xy times dy dx, which equals to x squared plus y squared. Notice that we're told to state our answer in the form y squared equals to f of x. All right, well, as usual, let me start by writing sol, as in solution, and let's get started. Looking at this differential equation, the first thing I would do is make dy dx the subject. In other words, I'm going to divide both sides by xy. In doing so, that becomes dy dx equals to x squared plus y squared over xy. Looking at this, it's quite clear that we're not going to be able to solve it by separating the variables directly. But looking at this fraction on the right-hand side, we can definitely see that it looks as though we're going to be able to turn this into a homogeneous differential equation. Now to do that, let's go ahead and write this as two distinct fractions. So that would be dy dx equals to x squared over xy plus y squared over xy. Now each of these two fractions can be simplified, so we can write dy dx equals to x over y plus y over x. Looking at the expression we have on the right hand side here, it's very clear now that we can think of this as a function of y over x. And so following up on what we saw previously, I'll go ahead and say let v equal to y over x, and therefore y will equal to v times x. And so using this new variable, as well as the fact that y equals to v times x, we're going to write this equation in terms of v and x. Remember, we'll replace dy dx by the derivative of v times x. And for that, we use the product rule. So the left-hand side becomes dv dx times x plus v times the derivative of x, which is just 1. And that's equal to x over y, which is 1 over v, plus y over x, which is v. We now notice that we have a v on each side of this equation. So we can go ahead and cancel those out, leaving us with dv dx times x equals to 1 over v. And now we can see that we've written our differential equation in terms of v and x, and most importantly, we can see that it is now a separable differential equation. Indeed, rearranging this, we now find that this is the same thing as v times dv, which equals to 1 over x dx. We now have all of the v's on the left-hand side and all of the x's on the right-hand side, so we go ahead and integrate. In other words, we now state that the integral of v with respect to v 
equals to the integral of 1 over x with respect to x. Integrating the left-hand side becomes v squared over 2, and that's equal to the integral of 1 over x, which is ln of the absolute value of x, and of course we have a constant of integration which we'll call c. Multiplying both sides of this equation by 2 leads to v squared equals to 2 ln of the absolute value of x plus 2c, and to avoid having to work with 2 times some constant, I'll go ahead and define 2c as a new constant which I'll call k. Keeping that in mind and using the fact that I can write this 2 as an exponent on the x inside the logarithm, this becomes v squared equals to ln of the absolute value of x squared plus k. And since x squared is always positive, I can get rid of this absolute value and state that v squared equals to ln of x squared plus k. Now that I've simplified things quite a bit, I'll go ahead and replace v by y over x. Remember, I'm using this change of variable at the top here. And so v squared will in fact be y squared over x squared. In other words, we have y squared over x squared equals to ln of x squared plus k. Finally, multiplying both sides of this equation by x squared, we find that y squared equals to x squared times ln of x squared plus k times x squared. And that's the first question answered. This is the general solution to this differential equation written in the form y squared equals to f of x. Now that that's done, we move on to question b. And in question b, we need to find the particular solution given y is greater than 0 and y equals to 3 when x equals to 1. Well, starting from the general solution we just found, we copy it replacing y by 3 and every x that we see by 1. So that's 3 squared equals to 1 squared times ln of 1 squared plus k times 1 squared. Now it's clear this simplifies quite a bit. We'll have 9 equals to 1 times ln of 1 squared, so that's ln of 1, plus k times 1 squared, which is just k. Now using the fact that ln of 1 equals to 0, we can go ahead and state that k equals to 9. And I'll go ahead and box that. There we go. So replacing k by 9, we can go ahead and state that y squared equals to x squared times ln of x squared plus 9x squared. But given we were told that y is greater than 0 in the question, it suggests that we need to find an expression for y and not y squared. So applying the square root to each side, we can go ahead and state that y equals to the square root of x squared times ln of x squared plus 9x squared. Notice that I didn't write plus or minus the square root here because I was told that y is greater than 0. And that's the final answer. And there we have it. Hopefully, now that we've worked through those two examples on homogeneous differential equations, you have a better understanding of what they are and how to solve them. And that's it for this tutorial.